Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, would you do me a favor? Those of you at Bukit Bato and online, and those of you here, uh, would you t turn around you and just s give a wave to the people around you? Those of you online, just say hi in the chat. We just want to welcome everyone around. It's good to see you back at church. Welcome home to all our Christians. And if this is your very first visit with us, a special warm welcome to you. Uh, the past two weeks, we have been on this uh, family and sexuality series, but today we're going to take a break from that because we're going to talk about something significant that's happening this weekend. All right, in any given calendar, in any given calendar, there are dates that bring about important significance. You know, for example, like New Year's Eve is on the 31st. And first is New Year's, or if I say 14th of February, what comes to mind? Silence, because people have been friend-zoned. Valentine's Day, you know, or like for example, 9th of August is National Day, or like 21st of October is, nobody knows, uh, it's Pastor Joey Ash's birthday. Oh, <laughs> I need a pay raise, no, I'm just kidding. So different dates have different significant meanings. See, from, from the day you were born to the day you graduated to when you got your first job, you, you were accepted for your first role, or maybe it's a wedding anniversary, or a first date, or maybe it's an engagement that you propose, or it's going to be like 15th of October that is very significant for Brother Aaron and Sister Jana that's happening in <laughs> soon this year. So all dates, different dates have different significance that brings some value and meaning to it. And for the church, in our church world, there are certain dates that we know of, or certain periods, seasons, like for example, Christmas, 25th of December, it's the day that we recognize the significance of the birth of Christ that He entered into this world. Or Easter weekend, where we celebrate uh, uh, and recognize the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But there's actually one more significant date in the calendar that we actually seldom talk about today. And that's the day of Pentecost. This is the event where the Holy Spirit was birthed and the New Testament church came forward. See, Pentecost is beyond just denomination stuff, the concept of denominations or whatsoever, Pentecostal, is more than that. It is a biblical historical event that took place 2,000 years ago that gave birth to the body of Christ, also known as the church right now. Until today, uh, the, the, the expansion of God's kingdom happens through the movement of the church. So I got to be honest with you, growing up, I grew up in church, uh, I grew up in a Christian family, and there were many moments where it was so difficult for me to identify with the movement of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit movement. You know, I witnessed people being slain in the Spirit. If that's what some of you may, may, may you know, identify with. You hear that growing up, being in church for a long time, where people fall back and then they lie on the floor. Or I, I've seen people laughing in the Spirit, rolling on the floors. I see, I've actually seen people fly back a bit. You know, like, whoa, I cannot tahan, and they flew back. I've seen many different things. And to me, growing up, it was small, like something that I couldn't understand. It was something that was very mystical. I remember being at, at camps where people would be prayed for and, and they would fall backwards. And there are times where I go forward for prayer, when I go forward for prayer, and someone comes and pray for me, they lay their hands on me. And you know, like, I, I just begin to hold my stunts and, and hold like a fort, like, to prevent the person from pushing me down because I don't want to be pushed. I don't want to fall down under anything. So I had little knowledge, very little knowledge and background about this whole thing. And the truth is that whatever we do not fully understand, we naturally have some form of resistance towards. Whatever we, we don't fully understand, we will have some resistance to it. And today, as we dig into the Word of God, as we understand the significance and the meaning behind Pentecost, I want to help us move beyond just the idea of sensationalism, or know that the Holy Spirit is some mystical concept, and understand theologically what Pentecost is, the event where the Holy Spirit came in power and birthed the early church movement. So the title today is The Purpose and Power of Pentecost. The Purpose and Power of Pentecost, and the big idea is this, God wants to empower us by the filling of the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses. God wants to empower us by the filling of the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses. So what exactly is Pentecost? Pentecost is broken down into pente, which is five, and 
Pentecost Day, which means 50th. So 50 days, it means 50 days from. And Pentecost is a Jewish tradition where it's celebrated 50 days after the Passover that happened in the book of Exodus. And it was also 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ that the day of Pentecost happened in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2. So in order to truly appreciate Pentecost, we need to understand the historical events in the Old Testament. See, the Bible is an amazing book where the New Testament is tethered to the Old Testament. Whatever happened and was recorded in the New Testament were all stuff that is f the fulfillment and response to what was happening and written and prophesied in the Old Testament. So today, I want us to just take a few moments to travel back in history and imagine being there with the disciples when Jesus was about to ascend, He's about to leave them, leading up to the day of Pentecost. It says in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, And while staying with them, Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. I want you to pay attention here that Jesus is the one telling His disciples, hey guys, I'm going to leave. I need you to wait. I need you to go to this place and wait because I want you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And here He says very clearly that for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. See, when Jesus was about to leave, to go back to heaven, He instructed them to go to Jerusalem and wait. Just wait. And that is... He asked him to wait for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He didn't describe when it exactly is going to happen or how exactly it would happen. He just simply told them, just wait. And I want us today to identify that there are specific differences between the baptism of water and the baptism in the Spirit. See, water baptism or baptism in Christ is a public declaration of our repentance demonstrating a new faith and life in Christ. However, the baptism in the Spirit, as described here by Jesus Himself, is a separate event that happens for believers. So we need to first be clear that baptism in the Spirit is not salvation. It's not salvation because our salvation is secured in the belief and confession that Jesus Christ is the one who died and rose again for our sin. He is the Lord and Saviour of our lives. The day that we gave our lives to Jesus is the day that the Holy Spirit indwells in us. But there is more that God wants to do in and through us. And this leads us to the baptism or what we know as the filling of the Holy Spirit. See, it's one thing to drink a cup of water, but it's another to be totally immersed in an ocean. It's one thing to drink a cup of water, but it's another thing to be totally immersed in the ocean. So what is the baptism in the Holy Spirit for? What is it for in the first place? Acts 1 verse 8 says this. Jesus is saying again, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the purpose for the baptism in the Spirit, is for those who follow Jesus Christ to receive power, to be empowered to be His witnesses to the world. The work of Jesus Christ had all been done. He's finished the work. He finished all on the cross. And now the mission was to be passed on to the disciples to go into all the world. But before they could embark on any mission or any work, Jesus told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they needed to be first baptized in the Spirit in order to be empowered to, for the work ahead. They needed to be baptized so that they can, they can be empowered for the work ahead. So as Christians, as believers, when we look at Jesus and the Holy Spirit, see the birth of Jesus signifies God with us. He's Emmanuel. The Word made flesh. He's with us. The death of Jesus on the cross signifies God for us, that He died on our behalf. And the coming of the Holy Spirit signifies God in us. God in us. 
So now that we understand this background, let's look at the actual event in the day of Pentecost. And here are two observations that I want to share with you on why Pentecost is so significant for us as believers. The first thing is this, Pentecost reclaimed the nations. Pentecost reclaimed the nations or what we know as reversed the rebellion of Babel. See, as mentioned earlier, Pentecost is a key festival in the Jewish calendar, also known as the Feast of the Weeks. And it was during this time that uh, for the Jews that were dispersed over the nations across the world to return to the temple in Jerusalem to celebrate the festival and tradition. However, there's a deeper significance to the day of Pentecost um, for Acts 2 that's actually pointing further back to the Old Testament, back to Genesis 11, where the Tower of Babel was built. This was a time that the earth had only one language and the people were evil and they rebelled against God. They came together to try and build a tower and name for themselves and the outcome was the confusion of different languages and the people were dispersed to the far corners of the earth. You can actually find out more and watch or re-listen uh, a further explanation of the rebellion at Babel by scanning the QR code that's on the screen or just go to YouTube and search Grace Assembly, the problem or solution of ba Babel. Then you can find out more over there. It's a deeper study into that. So we fast forward now to Acts chapter 2 in the New Testament and we witness the reversal of the rebellion at Babel. It happened that all the nations represented were gathered at this particular day when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. Acts chapter 2 verse 5 says this, Now they were, they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished saying, are not, all those, uh, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of, uh, of us in his own native language? And we jump down to verse 41, it says, So those who received the word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Was it a coincidence that the Bible described that every nation under heaven was present to witness the event at Pentecost? No. Not at all. See, every moment and event is carefully orchestrated by God Himself. Nothing happens by chance or coincidence. Of all the time and place for things to take place, God chose the day of Pentecost for the power of the Holy Spirit to be released because people from different nations were gathered in one space. And they were astonished and amazed at what they heard. The disciples were praising God in the different native languages and dialects that were present then. 3,000 souls and different people from different nations were saved. So what does this mean for us today? It means we need to reach the nations for Christ. What happened at the day of Pentecost that God released the Holy Spirit to reclaim the nations and reverse the rebellion at Babel is to be continued today as we reach the nations for Christ in our lives. See, Pentecost was the day that kick-started the reclaiming of nations back to God. And today, we are called to reach nations for Jesus. Throughout the Bible, you would notice God's heart for the nations to praise Him, to worship Him, that every tribe and tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It is the nations that are on God's heart. So as we are empowered by the Holy Spirit and called by God to be His witnesses, we need to also remember that we are on mission to reach the nations, to reach people for Christ. And we don't need to wait for missions convention or missions emphasis weeks, you know. We can actually engage in missions wherever we are today. In our schools, in our workplaces, in our communities, because our nation is a melting pot of different nationalities amongst us today. See, you and I, we, each of us here, we have access to certain groups of people that maybe no one else has. So I want to challenge and encourage us to ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to minister and reach people for God's kingdom. Grace Missions in this church is doing a fantastic job at reaching the nations for Christ. And there are many different opportunities available for every person to be involved in different ways. On top of that, you can pray for the nations 
See, each month, the missions team, they are sending out a prayer focus with specific updates on the nations that we are involved in and how we can partner with the work both locally and globally. You can find out more by actually following our Grace Telegram channel or asking your leaders and pastors for that prayer focus and just commit to pray for the different nations. So coming back to the event of Pentecost, see, we, we saw the disciples speaking in native languages of, um, of, for, of the people of different places across the world. And these disciples were just regular, ordinary folk who probably did not have any kind of formal education on languages or linguistics. Yet there they were, and the uh, Bible describes all 120 of them, they were speaking in different known languages that none of them understood or had experience in. How is this even possible? How is this even possible? See, this was only possible through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. God wanted to reclaim the nations through His disciples and the only way He did it was to release the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit on very ordinary people. It was to release the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit on very ordinary people. And likewise, God's will for us is to be His witnesses. And God is such a good God. He doesn't want you to be His witness and say, just go. He wants to empower you. He doesn't just throw you into the deep end. He wants to give you His Holy Spirit. He wants to empower you to do His will. And this leads us to our second observation. That is, Pentecost released the power of the Holy Spirit on all that were present. Pentecost released the power of the Holy Spirit on all that were present. Acts 2, 1 to 4 says this, when the, when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other th tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It was at this moment in Acts 2, when the disciples were all gathered in one place, where about 120 of them were praying and seeking God and desiring after God together, when suddenly the Holy Spirit came like a mighty rushing wind and filled the entire place. And the Bible describes tongues of fire that were rested on them. And they were filled in the Spirit and began to speak in tongues. I want us to look at the passage today and understand that it was not just some of them that experienced it. It was not most of them that experienced it or one of them. But all of them in that place were filled with the Holy Spirit. There was no special selection process of five people or five rounds of interviews or role play case scenario before you can get the experience and power of the Holy Spirit or baptism in the Spirit. It was as simple as being present, being available, desiring to seek God that made them perfect candidates to receive the Holy Spirit. The very first sign shown from this experience of the Holy Spirit is the speaking of tongues. And I believe some of us today, when we hear the word speak in tongues, well, it causes this adverse reaction in us. Because straight away our hair stands because it brings about some awkwardness to the subject. But can I encourage us today that what is awkward may not be awful. And to some extent, actually, it can be pretty awesome. And I want to encourage us, while this particular passage talks about tongues, known as known languages or referred to as known languages, the Bible actually has two specific references to the meaning of tongues. The first is this, other known languages that is spoken so that others can hear about God. And the second language is this, a heavenly language. So when you speak in tongues, there are two references in the Bible. One points to other known languages to point people towards God. And the second is a heavenly language that is meant to be done to edify or to build yourself up in the Lord. And that's why in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul discouraged the people from speaking in tongues in a public setting if there was no interpretation given. Why? Because if there's no interpretation, it wouldn't fit any purpose other than to bring confusion to the people there. People who had no idea what was happening. But at the same, in the same chapter and letter that Paul wrote, he said that there was a purpose for tongues that was to also edify and to build oneself up. In fact, Paul himself, a bit 
prideful in this area. He claimed to be able to speak more tongues than anybody else. We see this in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 17. He says this, For I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my mind. I will sing, in, sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with the spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. So the issue here is not about speaking in tongues. The real issue here is that is the speaking of tongues in appropriate place and setting. Paul was trying to teach us to pray in both understanding and in the Spirit. He's saying that there's a heavenly language here that transcends logic and connects us to the Spirit of God. So when we pray in tongues, the Spirit prays. And what it does is that it edifies us. It builds us up in God. And only the Holy Spirit can empower us to live a life that is victorious and holy. The truth is this, in our own strength, we are not able to do anything at all. How else could Peter the Apostle, who denied Christ, was a fake in front of others and ran away, be the same person after the encounter of the Holy Spirit to preach boldly in public and die a martyr for Christ, die for Jesus? Or Paul, a man who was a murderer of Christians in the past, be the very person after he encountered the Holy Spirit to preach the gospel to the Gentiles and planted many churches only through the power of the Holy Spirit. All this can happen. The transformation can happen only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So maybe there are some of us here who have been far from God. And maybe you're feeling spiritually dry or worn out. And I want to encourage us we, that we need to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit, to walk in the Spirit and live in His power. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. See, when we begin to pray in the Spirit, it builds our faith in God. I just want to share with you that there have been many moments where there were no words to describe the struggle that I experienced in my life. That I was just going through in my life before God. I've used up all the vocabulary already. You know, how, many, how many of us know that there's a certain limitation to the understanding and words and vocabulary, vocabulary that you have for what you're going through? But when I choose to begin to pray in the Spirit or to speak in tongues, I always walk away feeling refreshed and recharged and empowered to choose to do what pleases God. There were moments where I'm just praying in the Spirit and, and in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit began to put, put a name in my head. Someone's name just come in. And after praying, I decided, okay, I need to pray for this person. And after praying for this person, I texted the person and said, hey, you know, today the Lord put, put, put you in my heart and I just wanted to let you know that I'm praying for you. Interestingly, this person actually responded and said, yeah, actually I'm going through a very difficult time this week. And I was just questioning whether God is even real and your text coming in to me just so nice, reminds me that God is near and God is with me. This can only happen when the Holy Spirit is working in my or in our lives. We cannot do this in our own mind and in our own thinking alone. See, praying in the Spirit forces us to move beyond logic and to surrender and yield ourselves to a higher power in the Holy Spirit. And anyone who believes can receive this. Acts 19 verse 1 to 6 says this, And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. And there he found some disciples. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. See, this, this particular group of people had not heard about the Holy Spirit. 
They believed in Jesus, yet they were not empowered by the Holy Spirit. So Paul led them from the belief in Christ to the baptism and the receiving of Holy Spirit as a subsequent experience. And the sign of that was witnessed through them speaking in tongues and prophesying. So to put things in context, Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came on the disciples, happened about 30 AD. And Acts 19 happened at about 54 AD. That's close to about 25 years difference. See, if, if, if we just read the Bible like that, we will think, yeah, of course, naturally, this is what happened, so it's very close, so it must be something that they all tell each other. But 25 years later, they are still going around saying, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized in the Spirit? Are you empowered by the Spirit? Yes, you've been baptized in Christ, but have you been baptized in the Spirit? And today, it is the same thing. So we can agree from Acts 2 and 19 that when the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, the sign of their experience was in the speaking of tongues. And I want to just clarify that speaking in tongues is not an end to itself. It is not. Rather, the baptism in the Spirit is what we should seek to receive for our lives. And today, this is available for all of us here, all of us present. Regardless of our past or background, the truth is in God's Word. All Jesus says is, repent from your sin, be baptized in His name, and receive the Holy Spirit. So today, receive and be continually filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive and be continually filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the world that we live in today, if there is anything that the church needs, it will be courage and boldness to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. See, there's a sense of powerlessness against the culture and darkness of this world. And maybe for some of us, it's not about standing in the public and preaching to 3,000 like what the Apostle Paul did. Maybe it's as simple as proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to your family, to our friends, to that classmate that's been struggling with anxiety in his life or her life. Maybe it's praying with that colleague who is struggling with his or her marriage. For some of us, it could even be the issue that we've been struggling in our lives for a long time. And maybe it's just as simple as asking for courage to face the days ahead. See, the Holy Spirit wants to empower us today, to fill us with His power, to represent Him, to be His witnesses. I just want to share a, a short example and, and testimony of my friend. When I, was, um, in, 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 when I was overseas studying, I had a friend who loved, was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she went out to the streets one day and she was just praying in the Spirit and just speaking in tongues like on her own, you know, how she's just walking on the street and just like talking to God, praying in the Spirit, just allowing the Holy Spirit to lead her. And suddenly she saw a couple that was walking down the street. A couple and at that point of time, there was this in thing like dressed very goth, with like black makeup and like rocket hair you know, and like black denim and all that kind of, oh, that's me. Very black, lah, basically very black. And they were very dark and they were wearing eye makeup and, and it's a guy and a girl and they were walking down the street. And this lady, as she was walking, she was just praying in the Spirit. Suddenly the Holy Spirit said, stop and tell this couple, Jesus loves you. And she's like, huh? Why are you telling me? This? It's so weird. I don't even know them. They are just random people on the street. They expect me to say this thing. Are you crazy, Holy Spirit? And then she just kept sensing the Spirit saying, stop and say Jesus loves you to these two people. And so she decided and just like, hey, I'm, I, I just wanted to let you know. And then they're like, oh, yeah, they're holding hands walking. I just wanted to let you know that um, God wants me to tell you that Jesus loves you. That's all. And as she was standing there, the couple began to bawl their eyes out. They began to cry. And they told her, say that we were literally on our way to climb to the top of the building and jump together. Because we sense that no one in this world loves us anymore. And when you stop to tell us that, it reminded us that God is real. See, this can only happen when the Holy Spirit is working in our lives. There is no way for us to go around in our intellect and logic to say, yeah, I know, I think I should. See, it's more than that. It's the Holy Spirit that's working in and through our lives. Have you experienced the power of the Holy Spirit? See, we may not have all the answers in our lives, but the Holy Spirit is able to work in and through us. The truth is that we cannot do it in our own power and strength. 
And what we cannot do in the natural, the Holy Spirit is able to work in the supernatural. We need to be continually filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to experience freedom in Christ and to boldly proclaim the kingdom of God on this earth. At Pentecost, God released the power of the Holy Spirit on all that were present. And today, I believe God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to empower you to be His witness. And being a witness is as simple as telling people what you've seen, what you've heard, what you've experienced in God, in the Holy Spirit, to others. As the worship team comes up, I close with this story. See, one of the known views today on the baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit is that maybe this has ceased, it has stopped. One of the views is that, that the supernatural elements of miracles, speaking in tongues, healings, and all these things has ceased, it stopped. And this is called the cessationist view. And I know a, a lady who was a cessationist. She was brought up in a Christian family, uh, in a church denomination that did not believe in the baptiz baptism in the Spirit, let alone believe in speaking in tongues, or gifts of healing, or prophecy. See, the church was um, more on the traditional side and they would normally sing hymns and, and with a piano and, and nothing wrong with that. It's, it's great. They were going through this and that's how they, they, they did church in that sense. And about 15 years ago, she visited a church that believed in the baptism in the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And at first, when she went into the service hall, she attended the service, she sat there, she stood up. She was shocked at how the service was like. People singing loudly, lifting up their hands. The music was too loud. The lights was flashing. She was like, what is this, man? This is like a rock concert. I don't know what is this. This is not how I know what church is supposed to be like. And she was just taken aback. And at some moment, she heard people even speaking in tongues in the, in, in the church service. And her initial response to the friend that brought her was, hey, this place is uh, demonic. Uh. Demonic. Really demonic. And she does not believe, and she told them that she does not believe in such things. Speaking in tongues or this kind of expression. However, she chose to remain and just try it out, continue to try it out because she was just, uh, she, ap she appreciated and enjoyed being in the small group gatherings and she enjoyed the word that was preached and she was drawn to the passion of the people that they had for God and the community. There was just something different about it. So as she, was continue, as she continued to interact and be there with us through the period, one day, during a session in the camp, you can go ahead. During a session in the camp, there was an invitation. You know how at camps we have altar calls and response calls? There was an invitation for people to respond to the message. And she responded along with others, moving to the front, towards the front to be prayed for. However, because there were just a lot of people that gathered to the front, she was near towards the back. Nobody really laid hands on her and prayed for her. No, no one laid hands or prayed for her at all. There was no opportunity for that. But while she was standing there, and just coming to, the forward, coming to the front and desiring for God and say, God, yes, I respond to you. God, I desire you and I seek you. She, she couldn't even remember what the, the, the response was for. But she was just standing there desiring and seeking God. Without anyone laying hands on her or praying for her, she collapsed under the power of the Holy Spirit. She just fell to the floor. Boom! I remember I, was, I saw that happen. I was like, hey, what happened to her, man? She okay now? No one laid hand, lay hands on her. And she fell under the power of the Holy Spirit. I saw tears rolling from her eyes. She was crying and crying and bawling her eyes out. You know, that day she was filled with the baptism of the Spirit. And she began to speak in tongues after. And she would go on to describe the experience as how she actually felt suddenly alive and new in Christ. It was as though she experienced a revival for her own life. Her eyes were suddenly opened to, the, to, the, to what God was doing around her. What God wanted her to see. The lost, the broken, the needy, the marginalized. She would even describe going to MRTs and suddenly she would look around and she sees God's heart for this person and that person and that person sitting over there and she suddenly sees God's heartbeat for people. The need to reach them for Christ. And the truth is this, since then she has grown to be a woman who's deeply passionate for God and known for her sincere compassion for people. She has witnessed the Holy Spirit move in and through her life through prophesying and praying over others. She has witnessed the power of the Holy Spirit bring healing, physical healings at missions trips when she prayed for people overseas. 
And that woman is actually my wife. And I want to say this, if my wife is just like you and like me, if she can experience the power of the Holy Spirit in her life, when she started out as someone who did not believe in this, when she thought it was demonic to begin with at a point of time, then today, anyone can experience this. Anyone can experience the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage us today, since the day of Pentecost, till now, the movement of the church has only continued to grow. And it means that today we are able to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, to be empowered to be His witnesses, to reach people and bring nations back to God. It means that we are able to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses to everywhere we go. The early church in Acts faced much resistance and persecution for their faith. And yet, they didn't pray, God, change our situation, please. God, change everything. No, they didn't pray for that at all. They prayed for bonus and courage to preach even more. They didn't ask God to make the way for them. They asked God, fill me with your spirit, Lord. Give me bonus, Lord. Give me courage, Lord. Your spirit will empower me. So of all of what we just talked about, all of these things that I mentioned to you, they're all found in the Word of God. And there's nothing mystical about it. Maybe you have had a negative experience in the past growing up in church. I want to apologize on behalf of the church if we have made it so weird and so mystical to you. But today, with the word that is being shared before you, I believe God wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit if this is your first time seeking this. See, God promised in Joel 2, in the prophecy, that He will pour out His Spirit. And that happened in Acts 2, in the day of Pentecost. And this promise is still available for us today. You know what's the most beautiful thing about the book of Acts? It's also known as the Acts of the Apostles or the Acts of the Holy Spirit. If you read towards the end of the book, it feels as though there's no proper closure. It talks about Paul's life and then like, okay, yeah, but where is this going? And there's no like proper ending. And maybe, just maybe, I'm just thinking, maybe the reason why it's kept that way is because the Acts of the Holy Spirit is still happening today. It's still happening in our lives, in the church at large today. In and through us. So God wants to fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be His witnesses. So how do we receive the filling of the Holy Spirit? Very simple. Luke 11 verse 11 says this, Which of you fathers, if your son asks you for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he, or if he, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Not finances, not a car, not good grades, not a good life, not a good spouse, but the Holy Spirit. How much more will the Heavenly Father Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. He knows exactly what we need. He wants to give the best gift to you today. And that is the Holy Spirit. So if God did it then, in Acts 2, He can do it now. If He could do it with a bunch of people, different backgrounds, ordinary folk, in different situations, He can do it today in each one of us. God wants to fill you with the power of His Holy Spirit. And all we need to do is to simply desire and ask our Heavenly Father. That's what the Bible says. Not some mystical thing, not some weird concept. Just ask. Ask Him. And how much more will your Heavenly Father give it to you? So with all heads bowed, and eyes closed, across campuses right now, I would like to pray for two groups of people whether online or on site. And the first group of us, with heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. Let's keep this a sacred moment. Those of us who are here and we've been spiritually dry, we've been moving in low power mode. It's yellow on our bars now. Or no power mode, red. And today, you need more of the Holy Spirit. You need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You need a filling of the Holy Spirit in your life. 
I would like you to respond. You've been so far from God, you've had a lack of desire, a lack of passion, a lack of interest in the things of God. Whether it's a simple discipline of reading the, or studying the Word of God, or serving in church or gathering with people in community, you feel dry, spiritually dead, and worn out. And today you sense that you need a fresh encounter. You need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life, a continual feeling in your life. If that is you, no one looking around, could you kindly quickly lift up your hands? I can see it and you can put it down. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. At Bukit Batuk as well, online as well. If that is you, just respond with the emoji. Thank you, thank you. You can put it down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for responding. Anyone else, if that is you and you say, I need a fresh feeling of the Spirit. I'm spiritually, spiritually dry and dead. I need Him. Thank you. And the second group of people that I want to address today are for those of us who've been wrestling this, with this idea of baptism in the Spirit for the longest time. And today as you hear the Word of God, the Bible says very clearly, ask and you shall receive. How much more will your Heavenly Father give to you the Holy Spirit? And Jesus Himself instructed the disciples, wait for the Holy Spirit, for the baptism in the Spirit. And you will receive power in your life to be my witnesses. See, if you've never had an encounter or experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, and today you sense that the Lord is leading you and you want to be baptized in the Spirit, according to what the Word of God says. You want to receive the Holy Spirit to be empowered to be His witness. If that is you, no one looking around. I just want you to lift up your hand so I can see it and you can put it down. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you at the back. Thank you in the front. You can put it down. I see it. Thank you. Anyone else? Just a few more seconds. Thank you. I see your hand at the back there. Anyone else? Bukit Batok as well. Grace at Bukit Batok at online. If that is you, respond with an emoji. Come on. Anyone else? Just a few more seconds. Just between you and God and say, today I want to be baptized in the Spirit. Anyone else? Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's all rise to our feet right now. And I would like for all of us at Bukit Bato, at Grace at Bukit Bato and here at Tanglin online, if you have lifted up your hand, if you said, yes, I want to respond to this, I want to, I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, maybe it's a fresh encounter again. Or for those of us who want to be baptized in the Spirit for the very first time, I want you to step forward to the front. Our pastors and leaders will come and pray with you. I'll lead us in a prayer and we will pray with you. So come, those of us, who lifted our hands, just come to the front. As the band leads us in this chorus, would you just step forward? And if you know of a friend who wants to be prayed for, just come to the front right now. Those of you who want to be baptized in the Spirit, just come to this side. Those of you who need a fresh encounter to be prayed for, more of a Holy Spirit in your life, come forward this side. Come on, as the band leads us. It's time for you to step out. It's time to, for you to step forward in boldness and courage. Stop living in the same cycle. Stop living in that habit. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let the Holy Spirit fill with His power. So just come on to the front. Thank you, Jesus. You break our walls down. still some of us who have lifted up our hands and we have yet to come to the front I, I want to encourage you just come don't be afraid don't worry about the person beside you don't worry about what others will think just step forward to the front the Bible says desire and seek and ask and you shall receive I'm going to lead us in a prayer for those of us who are receiving the baptism in the Spirit for the very first time after I pray and the band continues to lead us in the chorus and song I want you to just speak up whatever is in your heart. Whatever comes to mind, just speak it out. Don't worry about anything. There is no format or template. If the Holy Spirit has filled you, you will receive something. Alright, so Father, right now, come on church. The rest of you, would you stretch out your hands to the front? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you say in your word, if we ask, we will receive. 
how much more will our Heavenly Father give us the Holy Spirit right now as we desire for the power of the Holy Spirit in this place. Lord, would you pour out your Spirit right now? Fall afresh on us, Lord. Fill us with your Spirit. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit come upon this place. We thank you, Lord. Fill the hearts. Fill every person with the desire that is seeking after you. Come on, Lord. Would you begin, do what you do? Holy Spirit, sweep across this place. Let a fresh wind begin to move right now in the name of Jesus. Baptize us in your Spirit, Lord. Let the, the power of the Spirit move in our hearts, in our lives. Let us be consumed by you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, just begin to lift up your voice. Whatever comes to your heart or your mind, just begin to speak it out. Just glorify and exalt God. Just praise Him. Thank you, Lord. So Spirit, break out. Yes, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Break our walls down. We come back before you, Lord. Spirit, break out. Heaven, let heaven touch us. Spirit, break out. Spirit, spirit, break out. We break our walls down. Just begin to respond wherever you are. So spirit break out. Break down, Lord. Break down, Lord. You break our walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. in my spirit that there's some of us here who have not received the baptism in the spirit or, or maybe we've, we've not been speaking in tongues and we've, we, we begin to feel a bit jaded like why is it not for me I want to say this if you have not speaking in tongues it doesn't make you any less of a follower of Jesus just begin to earnestly seek and desire the Lord Believe that the Holy Spirit is in you. The fact that you have received the Holy Spirit in your life and you say, yes, Lord, I want the baptism in the Spirit. I want to receive the Holy Spirit, the power of the Spirit. Fill me, Lord. Once you ask, the Lord will fill you. The Lord has filled you. So I want to encourage us today, if you do not speak in tongues yet, please do not feel disappointed. You're not any less of a human being or even a follower of Jesus. And let the Holy Spirit lead you in His own time and space. But what I can say is this, if the Word of God says it, it can happen. I've known people and friends who've waited months or even years before it happened for themselves. But it still didn't change who they were. But it's okay to desire, it's okay to ask and seek the Lord in this area. So I believe today that there are some of us, when we walk away, when you go back home, the Lord is going to encounter you in your bedroom. I believe that tonight, 
or even the nights to come, some of us here will experience the power of the Holy Spirit like never before. And I speak that over us today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So Father, today, we commit ourselves to you. We know that your word says that you want to empower us with your spirit for your will, for your work, God. And so today we receive, we receive your power. We receive your Holy Spirit upon our lives. Not just the indwelling, but the infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray over every person that is here present right now, whether online or on site. God, would you work in and through their lives. Empower them in their daily lives. In moments where it's difficult, and struggling for themselves, Lord, we believe as they look to you, your spirit will intervene. Your spirit will give them joy. Your spirit will give them peace. Your spirit will give them healing. Your spirit will grant them encouragement. Your spirit will give them boldness and courage wherever they are. We thank you, Lord, that we are called to be on mission. We are called to be your people, to move in your spirit. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, amen. Come on, just begin to pray us. Thank you. That's right. As we seek you, fire. Fall down.